This is part two, video number two uh, for the practice test. I did the stocks worksheet on the first test and the instructions are over here and on the first video rather and now we're going to do the remaining part. Uh, so in B14 I want the sum of all those numbers from A1 to F10, all the ones in blue. So that's going to be a sum function. The easy way to do that is go up here and choose sum on the home tab. And it looks for numbers that are nearby, and that's the best it can do, but I want all of those. So just drag the mouse. It'll change this to A1 colon F10 and hit Enter. And the sum of those numbers is 30,411. Now I want the smallest. That's going to be the min function. So let's go over here and choose min. And it's trying to find, that's the closest number, so it's trying to find the minimum of one number there. But again, I want to drag the mouse over F A1 to F10 and hit Enter. And the smallest number there is 21 right there. Now I want the largest, that'll be the max function. Go to max, and again, drag the mouse over the blue numbers, and it should say A1 to F10, and it does. Hit the enter key, and the biggest number there is 999. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is find the average, and those are all on my auto sum button up here. And the average, I need again to correct it, it's these numbers here. A1 to F10 is what it should say down here, and the dancing line should be around the numbers that you want. Hit enter, and there it is. Okay. Now, DB stands for database. I want to sort the data in decreasing order by number of shares owned. So this is number of shares owned, and I want decreasing. I've already got this set up as a table, so my drop-down arrows are already there. And I want decreasing would be largest to smallest. And there it is. DB2. Uh, create a filter that displays only those stocks that have a profit of 5,000 or more. So the profit, uh, where's profit or loss? Right here. Uh, and uh, you have to use a rule. So go to number filters. And I want greater than or equal to 5,000. And click on OK. And there we go. Looks like I got some extra formatting lines over here. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, create a filter that displays all stocks um, where the value in the category column is S or P. So let's go over here. And this one, you do check boxes. So I want S or P, which is the last two, which means I have to turn the other two off. Click on OK. And all that's left is the S or P. Okay, now we're going to do a chart. And I want a clustered bar. And this is horizontal. I don't know if we did one in the book, but it's exactly the same as a clustered column. Uh, except at the very beginning, what you do is you select bar instead of column. And so the bars will go horizontally instead of vertically. I want the stock names in column A, and I want the total purchase price. I highlight in red what's supposed to be make up the chart here. So it says do not include B, C, D, or E. So uh, you always include the column headings here so you can do a legend. And it's not adjacent selection, so hold the control key down and select this other stuff. And I, so that takes care of this, selecting the data, and then I want to go insert. And my chart is going to be a bar chart, and it's supposed to be a clustered bar, and that's exactly what it is. So there we go. Put on a separate worksheet. I'm, I'm going to do that last, because that way I don't have to go back and forth for my instructions here. Uh, add a title. Just click on it. When you've got the solid line around the outside, you can just start typing. So top six stocks. And hit enter, and it will change it. Add a legend at the bottom of the chart. Oh, that was lucky. The legend is already at the bottom. Um, make the chart title font size 20 points. Uh, click that. Make sure you got a solid line. Go to home and choose 20. Make the text on the horizontal axis, the vertical axis, and the legend 14 points. So let's do that and make it. Now it's going to look huge here, but once I put it on a sheet by itself, it'll look fine. So let's make that 14 and then down here and then let's make that 14. And now we can move it. It's on my design tab here under chart tools. Move it to a new sheet. And it didn't say anything about the name, so we can just go with the default name of chart one. Click on OK. And now, uh, with the bigger chart, uh, the text looks just fine. Okay, so that was our chart instructions. And then the last thing here, there's nothing on these four sheets here. Um, and in the summary sheet, I want the sum of all of the supplies. So 
equals, I want the numbers from row 7 on all four of these sheets. So his total supplies was this number, and it's Q1, B7, okay? Plus, I type the plus sign, and that will keep this here as I go on and select another item. And then I want this one, Q2, B7, just keep checking out the formula up here to make sure that it's correct. Do another plus sign, go to Q3, and click on B7, so and verify up here. And then do one more plus sign, and go to Q4, and click on that. And now you, the mistake people are tempted to make here is to go back and click on Summary. Do not click on Summary. Uh, it'll mess up your formula. Instead, hit the Enter key to complete that formula, and now that's the number we want. Now, um, it turns out that telephone hardware software training, telephone hardware software training, or in the next cells. So I don't need to do separate formulas there. If I copy this to the right, uh, the B will change to a C, and then a D, and then an E, and an F, and so on. And so I can just do the formula once, drag it all the way across, and now if you just, you know, if you're not convinced, uh, convince yourself by clicking on the cell and looking at this and make sure it's doing Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and C7 in every one of them, and then D7, and then E7, and F7, and G7, and H7. And that takes us to the end of the test.